welcome to the Dice vs Cards. Today we're looking at Age of War. Now we've already done a review of this game and a link of that can be found in the description but today we're teaching you how to play it and we're going to do so in the most concise manner in order for you to be able to get this to the table as soon as possible. So why am I still talking you ask? God knows. Let's do this. So the object of the game is to be the player with the most points when all of these castle cards have been taken by all the players. To set up the game, each player will need easy access to the seven dice that come with their game and then you'll want to put the castle cards in their set order so you'll see they have different coloured backgrounds and also symbols in the bottom right hand corner. So keeping them all in their respective sets will help players identify how they're going to play the game. You're then good to go. So after randomly selecting the first player each player turn is fairly straightforward in that you're going to start it by rolling all seven dice. Then you're looking to choose a castle that you want to capture on your turn. Each card represents a castle and as I've already explained the sets are not all the same size. The yellow clan has four cards and the green only one. The idea being that you get bonus points then if you successfully capture all of the cards in a set. So in order to capture a castle, you need to start using the dice that you've rolled to cover up the symbols on a castle. So here player one's going to decide to use this archer bow symbol and the cavalry symbol to try and capture Edo. So they'll cover up the respective symbols and any time dice are placed on a battle line as they're called, you then get to re-roll the remaining dice looking to try and cover the remaining battle lines. So we're looking for three swords on the bottom battle line here and we see that we can fill that with just one, the use of one dice. So we place that die on the battle line. Again, as we've succeeded, we re-roll the remaining dice and we're looking at this point for the archers and the cavalry. But we've only got archers, so that means that roll's been a failure. So you still get to re-roll, but this time you have to take one dice away in order to do so. So we'll roll the remaining three dice. Again, we failed. And at this point, it's looking very unlikely that we're going to get the last battle line we need. It's redundant rolling the last die because you see we need the two dice here. So player one has failed to capture that castle, but come oh so close to doing so. However, if he had successfully rolled those remaining archers and cavalry, then he would have taken that card and placed it face up in front of him. The play proceeds like that with each player having a turn then passing to their player to their left, remembering they're scoring points for each face up captured castle they get. But there are other couple of things that can either happen or options for players on their turn. The first of which is what happens when you complete a set. So you'll see here player one has got two of this clan's castles and then captures this last remaining one. So that's all three cards that can be found in that clan. So when that happens, you'll flip over the card that has a number on the back because you'll see that individually these cards are worth only six points but collectively they're worth eight. So you've then captured and subjugated that whole clan. What's more, that also means that your opponents can no longer capture your castles, which brings me to the second thing that can happen. So as long as opponents have face-up castles in front of them, they can still be attacked. The same rules apply in terms of trying to capture them in that you have to complete each battle line or each row, but you'll, be one, you'll have been wondering what this daimyo symbol that can be found in the top left hand corner of each card is and that's when you attack one of your opponent's castles so not only do you have to complete each battle line separately like you would normally if you want to take a castle from your opponent you'll also need to on a separate roll roll one daimyo to fill this symbol and as soon as you do you then take that castle and put it face up in front of you however if the idea was for you to complete a set of your own in so doing, you can immediately complete that set and flip the castles into one clan as we did here. The play continues like that round and round until all face-up castles have been captured by players from the centre of the table. Each player will then 
tally up the number of points they've got from completed clans or face down sets and any captured castles. Then the player with the most points is the winner. In the event of a tie, it's then the player with the most conquered castles that wins the game. And if there's still a tie, it's then the player with the most conquered clans. So that's how this game plays. Now you get it to the table and I'll see you next time.